This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we return to hope, war and resistance, Democracy Now! looks back at 2009. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided that the Nobel Peace Prize for 2009 is to be awarded to President Barack Obama for his extraordinary efforts to strengthen international diplomacy and cooperation between peoples. For all the talk, U.S. soldiers remain in Iraq, and their, and their bases are likely to stay there for some time. And the war in Afghanistan continues unabated, with uh, uh, President Obama actually sending in more troops. More people are being killed, both Afghans and NATO soldiers. The war's been expanded into Pakistan. So this is a sort of odd, though not surprising choice uh, by the uh, Nobel Prize Committee. We turn now to the Pacific island of Guam, where the United States is planning an enormous military buildup to the tune of $15 billion. I guess the best way to explain Guam's situation is that there's nothing neo about our colonialism. This is such old-school, styled colonialism, it's unreal. Tens of thousands of people took to the streets in Washington to take part in the National Equality March for Gay Rights. It's absolutely ridiculous that uh, we have to work so hard uh, to support this country and to be a part of this country and to pay and vote for this country, that we should be uh, uh, a question of, uh, of, of equality. And it's just absurd. It's absolutely absurd. It's enough. After many months of thoughtful deliberation, the fifth and final committee responsible for health care reform has passed a proposal that has both Democratic and Republican support. And it contains in it the things that the White House wants. And there is no public option. It taxes benefits for uh, union workers. The AFL-CIO is opposing it very strongly because of that. And I th hope that now at least we can have a frank conversation about what it is that the White House is backing. It's been described as the worst food crisis since the 1970s. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization, more than a billion people, or one-sixth of the world's population, go hungry every day. There is no shortage of food in the world. You know, the, we have about 6.7 billion people on the earth, and we produce food for 11.5 billion people. There's no shortage. It's only that one part of the world is eating more and one part of the world is, is starving. And I think that's a distribution problem, the political problem that we need to address. The Pakistani military has launched a major offensive against militants in South Waziristan, the heartland of the Pakistani Taliban. Over 150,000 civilians have fled the region seeking refuge. The chamber seeks a solid business solution one that requires much less intervention and has a proven track record. What we need is simply a carbon tax. Breaking news right now, the Chamber of Commerce saying it will reverse its position on the climate change bill and wants a carbon tax. All right, so the U.S. Chamber is denying it now. All right, so maybe not. Well, uh, that's Fox Business News. You might be able to guess who is behind this prank. Well, if you guess the yes man, you're right. In Baghdad, the death toll from Sunday's synchronized suicide car bombings has risen to 155. More than 500 people were injured. It was the deadliest bombing in Iraq in two years. Well, first of all, the first thing to say is that, you know, there is no peace in Iraq. That these bombings, first of all, put the lie once again to the three myths that we've been pushed about the war in Iraq. First, the story that the war is over. Second, that we won the war. And third, that the lessons of this victory can be applied to Afghanistan. We turn now to a Democracy Now! national broadcast exclusive. Greg and Janet Kiesling are the parents of Chancellor Kiesling, a U.S. soldier who took his own life on June 19th of this year. Since Chancellor's death, Greg and Janet Kiesling have yet to receive a letter of condolence from President Obama. Chancellor was extremely precious to us, and yeah. I sat around thinking, he died on foreign soil, soil for us, you know. He sacrificed his young life, six years. And uh, a letter from the president is a little bit of closure to show us that he appreciated our son's life. And I know he's busy with a lot of issues, but this is not one that is so hard to change. We end today's show with the Democracy Now! National Broadcast Cast Exclusive, an interview with Sean McFessel. He's the fourth member of the group of the three Americans arrested by Iranian authorities in July while they were on a hiking trip. They are. It's obvious they're not a threat to Iran, so I just don't understand why they're being held. 
On Monday, a federal court of appeals dismissed Canadian citizen Maharar's case against U.S. officials for their role in sending him to Syria to be tortured. This decision is broad enough to affect any of us. Basically, if the federal government decides to do something that it purports to be in our national security to do, they could torture any of us, they could kill any of us, and there would be no relief in the federal courts. In a landmark ruling, an Italian judge has convicted 23 Americans, mostly CIA operatives, for kidnapping a Muslim cleric from the streets of Milan in 2003. We go now to Rome, where we're joined by Armando Spatero. He's the Italian prosecutor who brought the case. I think that uh, it's a victory for the justice because the importance of this ruling is clear, according to my opinion. Namely, our democracy don't need absolutely in fighting terrorism. Thirteen people have been killed and at least 30 wounded at a U.S. military base in Texas in what's believed to be the worst mass killing of its kind in the nation's history. Military officials have identified an Army psychiatrist named Major Nidal Malik Hassan as a suspected shooter in the attack at Fort Hood. It may be hard to comprehend the twisted logic that led to this tragedy, but this much we do know. No faith justifies these murderous and craven acts. No just and loving God looks upon them with favor. We bid our fond and painful farewell today to our beloved firehouse, which has been our hearth and home for the last eight years. Um, and I bid our farewell to its owners, Keiko Tsuno and John Alpert. We moved here just before the September 11th attacks. We were the closest national broadcast to Ground Zero. The firehouse became our shelter in the storm and has been for all of these years. Civil rights attorney Lynn Stewart has been ordered to prison to begin serving a two-and-a-half-year sentence after a federal appeals court upheld her conviction on Tuesday. Lynn Stewart was found guilty in 2005 of distributing press releases on behalf of her jailed client, Sheikh Omar Abdurrahman, also known as the Blind Sheikh, who's serving a life sentence on terror-related charges. I made these decisions based on my understanding of what the client needed, what a lawyer was expected to do. Our Canadian border guards trying to limit free speech. An American journalist is outraged by what happened to her on the way to Vancouver last night. She was detained and questioned about what she was planning to say about the Olympics. Our Go Public reporter Kathy Tomlinson has the exclusive top story. An award-winning U.S. journalist. Amy Goodman is well known in alternative media circles. Is the host of Democracy Now! I didn't know we needed to have even a visa coming into Canada. Here to promote a book. Clearly, he wasn't going to let us go. She wasn't sure she'd get in. They took the passports and then said, pull over. You were flagged right off the bat. Uh, yeah. Goodman was grilled at the Peace Arch border Wednesday, asked repeatedly what she'd be talking about. On Monday, the State Department praised this weekend's Honduran elections, which saw coup backer and wealthy landowner Porfirio Lobo emerge victorious with 55 percent of the vote. Zelaya supporters boycotted the election, and many Latin American countries have refused to recognize its outcome. Amy, President Zelaya clearly says that this election has to be rescinded. It, it can not uh, be justified in any legitimate way because of the very poor participation by the electric. It needs to be reprogrammed, and that is the only way that democracy can return to this country, because this election was an instrument of the coup regime uh, to cover up the repression that they've been doing and to try to reach out to the international community.